Prince Harry really wants his privacy. He's searched everywhere for privacy. He's gone and turned over every rock looking for it. He's trekked through the forests and over mountains in pursuit of his privacy. He's looked for privacy in interviews with Oprah and in podcasts and documentaries and in his just released Netflix series. And now he's looking for privacy by publishing an autobiographical book, which will be released this week and which he promoted in a 60 Minutes interview and in an interview on ITV in Britain and in a Good Morning America interview and then in an appearance on The Late Show later this week. He's gone in front of every camera in the world and stepped on every stage and milked every moment under every spotlight he could find, all because he and his wife just want privacy. His upcoming book, a tell-all memoir, uh, much like the type often written by those who desire privacy more than anything, apparently goes into great detail about all of his squabbles and beefs and feuds with his family. Harry has become the world's foremost leader in the field of oversharing. And this book is exactly what you'd expect from someone with those kinds of credentials. He not only airs his family's dirty laundry, publicizing and cashing in on all of his petty resentments and familial disputes, he also provides intimate details that even the most ardent Harry and Meghan fans, if such people could possibly exist, would not have ever solicited. For example, he reveals that, um, this is what he says in his book, his book that, that he once suffered frostbite on his genitals. Harry will not even allow his privates to remain private, and yet he just wants privacy. The title of the book, Spare, is a um, reference to Harry's feelings of being the spare, the outcast in his family. Poor Harry. Poor, poor, put-upon, oppressed, multi-millionaire, world-famous Harry. He is in so much pain, he says. And his wife is also in pain. Pain and suffering is a phrase that has come up in multiple interviews about his book. And before his book, he's talked a lot about it. His pain and suffering, his wife's pain and suffering. Complains about it. And accuses his family of being complicit, quote-unquote, in that pain and suffering. The general response to this public vendetta that Harry has against his own family has been to parse through his words, trying to discern what is true, what isn't, what needs more context, etc. Now, personally, I have no idea if Harry is telling the truth or not, and I don't care. Every family has turmoil and drama. Every member of every family has been both wrong and right, both bully and bullied. Families are complicated. And if you're hearing one person's version of a dispute, you can be quite certain that the other people concerned, those being painted as villains, would have a very different take on things if you asked them and if they were willing to answer. This is why family issues should be kept within the family. You don't have to like every member of your extended family, but there's never a time when it's necessary or good or justified to turn your family drama into a public spectacle. And this, by the way, is a lesson that many people in our society ought to take to heart. Now, most of us aren't in a position where we can complain about our families in a 60 Minutes interview. Many people probably would like to do that, but there's just no interest. Um, yet it is quite common to see people on a smaller scale, and yet the largest scale available to them, airing their dirty laundry and family disputes in public to people around them, on social media especially. They provide one side of a complicated story to an audience that is not involved, that has no business being involved, and that can't do anything with the information you're giving them or do anything about the problem to help resolve it anyway. Which is why, you know, if you have an issue with your family, you should confront your family and your close friends in person. Tell them how you feel. You might even get angry. You might yell. I mean, these things happen in families. That's normal. But in public, there should be a united front. So you, for instance, might think that your brother is an idiot. You might tell him so to his face. But if someone outside your family calls him an idiot, you should take offense at that and respond accordingly. He's an idiot, but he's your idiot because you're family. This is one of the many things that Harry gets wrong. But it's not just his family that he feels victimized by. He says it's also the press. The couple have been on a never-ending press tour for the past like two years now, doing everything in their power to attract attention from the press. And yet they are oppressed by the same press that they can't stop talking to. During his 60 Minutes interview, he explains that the media is bigoted, bigoted against Megan. And it's not only actually the, the media that's bigoted, but uh, listen to this. What Megan had to go through was, was similar in some part to what Kate and what Camilla went through. Very different circumstances. But then you add in the race element, which was what the press, British press jumped on straight away. I went into this incredibly naive. 
I had no idea the British press was so bigoted. Hell, I was probably bigoted you, before you, the relationship with, with Meghan. You think you were bigoted before the relationship with Meghan? I, I don't know. Put it this way, I didn't see what I now see. You don't know if you were bigoted? How could you not know if you were bigoted or not? Make the new year all about the new you with GenuCell skincare. For a limited time, save over 75% off GenuCell's most popular package to take care of all your skincare needs. Watch those fine lines, forehead wrinkles, sagging jawline, dark marks, skin redness, and even under eye bags disappear. My talent manager, Tessa, uh, we used to call her assistant in these things, so now it's okay, it's been a promotion, uses GenuCell under eye treatment to help get rid of the bags under her eyes, and she says it works like a charm. I ask her about it every day, and she tells me, still working. That's the conversation we have in real life. GenuCell skincare can help you turn back the clock and look 5, 10, even 15 years younger. It's made for both women and men, safe for all skin types, and works for all ages. GenuCell promises immediate effects and results that will make you smile or get 100% of your money back. Right now, get GenuCell's customer favorite, a deep firming vitamin C serum. It's absolutely free in every most popular package. You can hydrate your skin while restoring your natural, vibrant glow. Visit GenuCell.com slash Walsh and use code Walsh at checkout. Every order is automatically upgraded to free shipping. That's GenuCell.com slash Walsh. GenuCell.com slash Walsh. Now, this is mostly empty virtue signaling, of course. Here, Harry is uh, doing the work. And doing the work means baselessly accusing everyone, including yourself, of bigotry. But that's not to say that, he, that he's being entirely insincere. It's clear that the man has been genuinely brainwashed into the religion of wokeism, and in that religion, bigotry is the original sin, but not shared by all people, shared only by members of the white race. This is a, it's the, the original sin of white people, and uh, people who are not white have no sins at all. It is a hazy, undefinable sort of evil shared by every member of the white race. Harry doesn't remember any specific occasion of being bigoted. He never harbored any racial animosity towards non-white people. And yet, e even though this, by definition, means that he was not racially bigoted, he still cannot declare himself to have not been bigoted. Because the actual belief of the woke white person is that he himself cannot speak to his own racism or lack thereof. He is not an expert in his own thoughts and feelings. It's up to a member of the racial victim class to determine whether he is racist or not from one moment to the next. He cannot speak to his own motivations and intentions, but they can. And now that Harry is married to a, a member of that racial victim class, uh, she, can, she can attest to his non-bigotry now. But before her, she, she was not there to absolve him. And that's the way he sees it. And finally, speaking of Megan... Um, this is maybe the most important, or at least most useful point for most of us. Let her be a warning to men everywhere. Because although Harry is no victim, no martyr, much as he wishes to be, he is still a pitiful and pathetic figure, a broken shell of a man. He's still rich and famous, but he's no longer respected. And that's the worst thing. The worst thing a man can lose is respect. A man can live and be happy without much money, without many things, but the loss of respect is what truly devastates and in many cases can prove fatal. And Harry has become a man who is no longer respectable in large part because he married a woman who does not respect him. This is the influence that a woman can have over a man. Her feelings about him often become a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. I think it was G.K. Chesterton who noted that the, uh, noted the, the, the positive end of this kind of relationship, explaining how the lesson of beauty and the beast is that a man must be loved in order to become lovable. Beauty lifts up the beast, her love helping him to become the man he was meant to be. But a bad woman can have the opposite effect, turning a prince back into a beast. In this case, a whiny, petulant baby beast, but a beast all the same. My wife has helped me to become a better man because she loves and respects me. And when you love and respect something, you want it to be the best version of itself. But then there are the Meghan Markles of the world who will break a man instead of building him up, bringing out his worst aspects while smothering all that was good in him. This is the, the nightmare scenario that has chased many men away from marriage, as we've discussed over the last few days. But the good news is that it's pretty easy to spot the Meghan Markles. So easy that most of us had the actual Meghan Markle figured out after listening to her speak for like 45 seconds. 
either Harry didn't see it because he allowed himself to be blinded by her good looks or wouldn't be the first man to fall into that trap, or he did see it and decided to move forward anyway, perhaps partially motivated by his simmering resentment for his family. Whatever the case, there's a very basic checklist that a man should refer to when dating a woman, and the woman should have a similar mental checklist in mind when dating the man. The first and biggest question and the one that a discerning man should be able to answer rather easily is, does she respect you? You should be able to figure that out pretty quickly. What, 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 an important skill for a man to learn is, is, to, is, to, is to be able to identify when he's not being respected. Also, does she cheer you on? Does she root for your success and happiness? Or is she more focused on her own? Does she desire for you to have a close relationship with your family? Or does she want to isolate you from everyone you know and love? Does she talk about herself all the time? Or does she spend more time asking questions about you? Is she sincere? Is she kind? Or do, does she only appear to be kind in public, but then you see her rolling her eyes behind the scenes? Does she have empathy? These are the questions to ask yourself when discerning marriage. Now, it's possible that a very gifted phony may be able to deceive you on many or even all of these points, but most phonies are not that gifted. Meghan Markle certainly isn't, which is why I was able to answer all of these questions about her about five minutes after discovering that she existed. Okay, I didn't even know she existed. Five minutes later, I knew everything I needed to know about her. Harry should have been able to answer them, but if he did, he ignored the answers, and now he is paying the price. That'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the Members Block. You can become a member and uh, watch the Members Block by using code Walsh at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Hope to see you over there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.